we're going to do in this video comes out of the book Psychogeometry, which was written by Maria Montessori. And it's a fascinating book because it explains briefly how geometry is approached from an elementary perspective so that it's developmentally appropriate, why it's important to present geometry concepts in the elementary instead of waiting for middle school and high school. And then it goes on to show different activities that you can do and that we'll be talking about a few of them. And it helps you to also understand very in depth how to use some of the more advanced Montessori geometry materials. So it's a fascinating book for anybody who wants to uh, explore Montessori geometry more in detail. And I highly recommend that you get it if you're homeschooling for the long term and you want to use Montessori. Now for your child, I love this book. I've had it in my classrooms and I have it obviously now that I'm homeschooling. And it's a great uh, activity book that has all sorts of math and geometry explorations but presented in a way that they are games. The children don't really realize that they're doing math and geometry. And so, for example, you have Sierpinski triangles, you have Pascal's triangles, um, you have all sorts of explorations with shapes, um, the tessellations, which are amazing. Um, there are all sorts of things. You have a golden spiral. So, so many concepts that your child can explore and a lot of these concepts connect really well with the work that the children are doing in math and geometry. So highly recommend that, that you get this book. Um, it's especially good for, I would say, children from second grade onwards. You're going to need a good compass. I recommend that you have one for you and one for your child so that when you are presenting, your child could be working alongside you and you don't have to be taking turns with the compass and readjusting it. Now you're also going to need a straight edge. Now this, on this side it's a ruler, but we don't want to use a ruler. We want to use a straight edge. And the reason for that is that we're going to be exploring Euclidean constructions. And basically what Euclid said was that there was a whole series of shapes that could be drawn or constructed just by using a compass and a straight edge without having to measure. And so you can create things like a perfect equilateral triangle without having to use a ruler, simply by having a straight edge. And that's very uh, impressive for the children. So we want to make sure that they have something where the ruler is not involved. So a straight edge. Now, you are going to need a set square for a couple of constructions. Now, that makes our drawings not strictly Euclidean, but that's okay. We're not focused really on being perfect Euclidean geometrists. We're focusing on helping the children explore geometry with their hands and their senses. You're going to need a nicely sharpened pencil, a good quality eraser. You're going to need some blank pieces of paper. And then, ideally, you would want to have a nice self-healing board so that you can use your compass without having a lumpy surface or without it slipping. But honestly, if you're homeschooling and you're on a budget, any piece of um, cardboard, this is the back of a, um, of a little pad. And so any piece of cardboard will work just as well. So that's what I'm going to use today. We use what we have to explore. So let's get started. The first construction that we're going to explore is a frame on the paper. And this can be great when children are working on final drafts of writing projects and they want to do a beautiful decorative frame. This can be a lovely activity to introduce. So for this activity, we're going to fold our paper in half because we're going to be thinking about making a little booklet, a cover for a book. And now we're going to take our straight edge and we're going to go from corner to corner, line up our straight edge, and draw a very soft line. This can be hard for children at first to draw very soft lines, so they might need practice. 
They will also need practice learning how to hold the straight edge still so that it doesn't move. So really take it slowly, whoops, really take it slowly with your children and make sure that they develop the skills that they need to be successful. Now that we have our cross, I'm going to open my compass so that it is slightly smaller than this diagonal here. So I'm gonna say around here. So I'm gonna put my compass in the very center and I am going to cast an arc, a very soft arc, on each one of these diagonals. See it right there? I'm going to come over here, cast another arc. Cast a fourth arc. So if you can see, they're very soft, but I have one, two, three, four. So now we line up our straight edge with our points and this line can be darker because this is going to be our frame. Just one line. Now we're going to line up from here. Second line. A third line. And a fourth line and I have my frame now your child or you can show them that you can keep going into the square you can make your compass wider to make another frame or narrower and make a second frame inside and what's really interesting if you keep making these lines is that you can show your child that these lines are all going to be perfectly parallel to each other. So let's take a look. We go from here. If we start a second frame, we realize these two lines are perfectly parallel to each other. And so this can become not only an exploration of how to make a frame, but also a review of the concept of parallel lines and how to draw them. And then when your child is done, then they can go in and create any type of decorations that they want. They can use the straight edge or they can just freehand draw decorations and then go in and color them. For this exploration, we're going to be constructing an angle bisector. And what that means is that we're going to split an angle exactly in half, but without using a protractor, just with the straight edge and the compass. So the first thing that you want to do is draw an angle, any angle, doesn't matter. And then you're going to take your compass and you're going to place the tip of the compass on the vertex and you're going to cast an arc across the entirety of the angle. You're going to see how here it intersects and here it intersects. So then without adjusting your compass, you're going to place the tip of the compass on the first intersection and cast an arc. Then you're going to move your compass over to the other intersection and cast another arc. And where those two arcs crossed, that's where we're going to draw a little dot so the children can line up their straight edge. And we're going to draw 
the angle bisector. And now we know that this angle was split perfectly in half and this angle is equal to this angle. The children can explore that and confirm it with a protractor. They can write the definition for angle bisector. They can also put a lovely title and decorate their work. For this exploration, we're going to be constructing three different triangles by sides. So that means we're going to be making an equilateral, an isosceles, and a scaling triangle. But what's really interesting about this exploration is that we are not going to be using a ruler. So we're not going to be measuring the sides. We're only going to be using a straight edge and a compass. So for the first triangle, you're going to draw a line and then you're going to measure out your compass so that it is exactly the same length as that line. The opening of your compass needs to be the same as the length of that line. And then you're going to come up here and cast an arc, switch your compass to the other end of that line segment and cast another arc. This point where those two arcs intersect is where you're going to be drawing your lines. And now we can explore with the children that this side is the same length as this side and the same length as this side. And the children can label the triangle an equilateral triangle. They can also write a sentence defining the equilateral triangle and they can symbolize it with the grammar symbols if they'd like to. Let's draw the next one. This time our compass is going to be open so that it's a smaller distance than the line. You're going to cast one arc, move it to the other side, Cast another arc. I'm making my arcs kind of dark because I want you to see them, but you want to model making them as soft as possible so that you don't have to erase too much. And now you have an isosceles triangle and you can show the children that this side is equal to this side, but this side has a different length. And that's an isosceles triangle. And now we're going to make a scalene triangle. And for the scalene triangle, we don't even need a compass. All we need to do is draw three lines of different lengths. And we can explain to the children and explore with them that this side has a certain length, this side has a different length and that side has a different length and then the children can label them. The last construction that we're going to do in this video is constructing a parallelogram but these are by no means the only constructions that you can do with your child. You can do all of the ones that are in the book Psychogeometry and you can also research Euclidean constructions or Euclidean geometry to find more explorations with a compass and a straight edge. To construct a parallelogram, you're going to need to draw an angle using your straight edge. Now the angle needs to have two sides that are of different lengths. So you can see this one is longer than this one. And what you're going to do once you have your angle, is you're gonna take your compass and you are going to open it or adjust it so that it is exactly the length of the shorter side. And then you're going to move the compass to the longer side, place it at the very end, and carefully cast an arc Then you're going to do the same thing on the other side. You're going to widen or open up your compass 
so that it is equal to the long leg of your angle. And then you're going to move your tip to the end of the short leg of your angle and you're going to cast another arc. Now, right here, that little intersection is where you're going to draw you're going to draw your line and come down here and draw another line. And now with your child, you can explore the different lengths. And so you can see that these two are the same length and they're parallel. And these two are the same length and they're parallel. And what's also very interesting is that these two angles measure the same while these two angles measure the same. And so the children can write the definition of parallelogram, symbolize it with the grammar symbols, or just place a title. They can decorate their work, create a beautiful frame around it, and really have fun and beautify their work. I hope you take the time to explore these constructions and the other constructions that are in the psychogeometry book. Geometry can be really fascinating, and if your child sees that you are enjoying it and that you are making great discoveries, they will love it too. I hope you have fun, and let me know how it goes.